Have you ever wondered why it's so common to see multiple pairs of studio monitors in a mixing studio? Well, in this video, you'll not only learn why many professionals use multiple monitors, but you'll also learn how to set it up and some tips that will help you get the most out of alternate studio monitors in your system. Thanks to Radial Engineering for sponsoring this video and supporting audio education. Radial recently released a monitor controller called the Nuance Select, and that's what I'll be using for the demonstrations in this video. The Nuance Select has very straightforward I.O. and controls, making it perfect for understanding the general signal flow of a multi-monitor setup. And if you know anything about Radial or if you've ever used their products in the past, you know that this stuff is built like a tank. So if you're looking for a monitor controller, this is a great option that will last you for years to come. You can learn more with the link below the video. Before getting into the practical setup and calibration tips, let's quickly go over why you'd want to use multiple pairs of studio monitors in the first place. As we all know, the same mix can sound radically different depending on the playback system you're using. This is one of the biggest obstacles mix engineers face. How do you make a song sound good for listeners when you have no control over what system the listener will be listening on? There isn't an answer that provides a complete solution. It's pretty much a fact of life that you can't make a mix sound the same everywhere. But when you change the goal from making the mix sound the same everywhere to making the mix sound good everywhere, the goal becomes much more achievable. First, you want to optimize your own system to be as accurate as possible. This includes using high quality studio monitors, setting up the monitors properly, and working to reduce the impact of your room on sound quality, usually through the use of acoustic treatment. We've got videos on our channel that go into much more detail on each of these topics, so I'd recommend checking those out. I often see comments asking, if a mix is going to sound different everywhere, why should you care about how accurate your mixing system is? I understand the sentiment here because high quality monitors and acoustic treatment can be expensive. And I definitely don't want you to get the wrong idea, thinking that you need to have a perfect system in order to mix music well. In reality, you start with what you've got and you slowly improve over time. But when you can afford to install some acoustic treatment, it's totally worth it. And here's why. You can't predict how the mix will sound different when listeners play it through their own speakers in their own room. But you can assume that it will sound different. If your system has a big dip at 250 hertz, you'll have no idea what's going on at 250 hertz within your mix. Maybe the listener system will produce 250 hertz well, but if you're unable to hear how 250 hertz sounds in your room, the way it will sound to that listener is a complete toss up. This is a simple example, but the point is that you should really strive to create a system that helps you gain a better understanding of your mix all throughout the frequency spectrum. Beyond having a very accurate full range system for listening to your mix, it's also helpful to have a system that is intentionally limited, such as a small speaker that can only reproduce frequencies in the mid-range. This will help you check that your mix sounds good on a full range system and also that it holds up on a band limited system. Again, they don't need to sound the same, but hopefully both allow the key elements of the music to be heard. You might notice that I've got two really nice pairs of monitors here, in addition to some smaller speakers. At first, you may think that these two sets of monitors would be redundant, but they actually sound quite different. Even though I've got acoustic treatment in my room and corrective EQ applied to each monitor independently, these two pairs of monitors still offer different perspectives. The Atom monitors are wider and have a brighter character, while the Neumann monitors are narrower and have a lot more punch in the mid-range. Therefore, I can get different perspectives on stereo imaging with various monitor placements, and I can get different perspectives on tonality and transients with various monitor voicings. All of that takes me closer to the ideal of a resilient mix, a mix that translates the core vibe of a song to a wide variety of speakers and setups. Building a system that gives you a way to understand your mix is an important element, but that alone will not make your mixes sound professional. For that, you'll need to learn mixing techniques from teachers and mentors, experiment with those techniques on your own, and get feedback from experts and peers to ensure you're heading in the right direction. That's exactly what we do in the Audio University membership community, so check out the link below the video to become a member and start hearing noticeable improvements in your mixes immediately. Now that you understand why various monitors and playback systems are useful, let's talk about how you actually set this up. 
If you have an audio interface with a lot of line outputs, you could feed each monitor with a separate line output. However, unless there's a cool feature that adds additional functionality, like a room EQ or something, that is potentially a waste of those additional outputs. You probably want the same source to be sent to each set of monitors, and you probably don't want multiple sets of monitors active at the same time. Therefore, it probably makes much more sense to take one stereo line output from your audio interface to a monitor controller, like the Radial Nuance Select, and then route that signal to the various speakers in your setup. To keep it simple, Let's say you're using an interface with two line outputs. Output one and output two on the interface will connect to the left and right source one input connection on the monitor controller. Then rather than connecting your monitors to the interface directly, you can connect the speaker A outputs on your monitor controller to your primary monitors, connect the speaker B outputs to your secondary monitors, connect the headphone output to your headphones, and potentially connect the aux output to a second pair of headphones via an external headphone amplifier. I don't have a sub connected to this system at the moment, but if you use a subwoofer, you could use the sub output on the monitor controller and choose if you want the sub active or inactive, independent of the speaker output you're using. I actually use the sub output to feed a small mono speaker in this current setup. With this setup, we can keep everything connected and easily switch between speaker A, speaker B, headphones, and the auxiliary speaker each offering a different perspective on how the mix will sound in the wild. There's also an additional input on this monitor controller that could be used for some other playback devices, like a turntable or a second stereo output from the interface that provides a way to monitor a cue mix or a reference track. This particular monitor controller is extremely high quality. Not only do the buttons and knobs feel top notch, but the circuitry within goes to extreme lengths to ensure minimal distortion of the signals passing through it. You don't want the monitor controller to change the sound because then you'd be hearing something that's not true to the actual mix you're working on, meaning you want the monitor controller to be as transparent as possible. In this case, Radial has achieved this with their proprietary clarity circuit. The Nuance Select uses 100% Class A circuitry and an ultra low noise internal power supply to further reduce the overall noise characteristics of the circuit. A true stepped attenuator provides a premium feel for the main level control, which is formed around a 21 position gold contact switch and paired with a string of carefully selected precision resistors. Additionally, the Nuance Select has zero capacitors in the audio signal path, as these can act as high pass filters and cause additional distortion. Instead, DC servos are used throughout the signal path, and the overall result is a level of total harmonic distortion, or THD, that's so low it's difficult to measure, 0.00001%. The basic steps of integrating multiple sets of monitors into your system are pretty straightforward, especially if you're using a monitor controller that's designed specifically for that application. However, there are a few things you'll want to keep in mind in addition to that initial setup. First is the monitoring level. As you may know, louder is usually perceived as better when compared to a quieter signal. And for this reason, you want to make sure that you match the perceived loudness anytime you're comparing two signals. This piece of advice applies to A-B testing within a plugin, and it also applies to A-B testing with multiple monitors, adjusting the output volume level on each monitor. To put this into action, I'd recommend the following steps once you've got everything connected. This process is to make sure that each of the four studio monitors provide the same dBSPL at the listening position. So I've got pink noise playing out of the DAW. I've got the knob set to some nominal level that I can return to. And the SPL meter from Amazon is right here at the listening position. When I unmute Studio Monitor A, it currently plays out of both the left and right speaker. So what I'm gonna do is pan the pink noise to the left side and then unmute Studio Monitor A. And on the SPL meter, we can see that we're reaching about 74 and a half to 75 dB SPL. Let's pan over to the right side. So now we're gonna play pink noise out of studio monitor set A right. That one also comes in at about 75 dB SPL. 
Then we can just repeat that process with studio monitor B. Panning to the left. Okay, this one is coming in about 76 dB SPL. Now we wanna keep the knob the same because that would affect all of the studio monitors. What we need to do is get behind this studio monitor and adjust its volume output level. Now this one is also reaching this at 75 dB SPL, so we will pan to the right and activate Studio Monitor B again. And now, theoretically, if we did everything correctly, all four Studio Monitors have the same sensitivity. You send in a signal at minus 18 dB full scale. And at the listing position, you'll hear that signal at about 75 dB SPL. And what that allows us to do is when we pan this back to the center, and when we play music, we can switch between A and B without being distracted by the level difference between the two so that we can focus on the more important things. Now, the topic of studio monitor level calibration really does deserve its own video. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in learning more about that. Keeping the monitoring level consistent is important because we tend to perceive louder signals as more balanced, as seen in the Fletcher Munson curve data. You'll also want to ensure that your subwoofer is properly aligned with your monitors, both from a crossover frequency and an overall level perspective. In many cases, a subwoofer is designed to be used with a particular pair of monitors that will have a built-in crossover filter, but it's important to get the level right or you run the risk of reducing the performance of that crossover. You can learn more about the Nuance Select by using the link in the description below. And if you're wondering what I mean by crossover, check out the video that's on your screen now. I'll see you there.